Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion Anthrax Care in Kerala. Let us try and understand what is this topic all about. First up, let's look into the context. There is an anthrax outbreak in Kerala and it has claimed the lives of some wild boars in Athrapalli forest region. In this particular backdrop, we will try and understand what is this anthrax, how does it spread to the animals, how does it spread to the human beings, what are the symptoms, what are the treatment measures that one can take and how anthrax can be used as a tool of bioterrorism. Everything we will try and understand in this lecture. What is this anthrax? When we speak about anthrax, it is also known as malignant pustule or Ulsotter's disease is a rare but serious disease caused by the Roche bacteria known as Bacillus anthracis. So this happens to be an infectious bacterial disease of animals caused by a spore forming bacteria called as the Bacillus anthracis. It occurs naturally in the soil and usually affects domestic and wild animals that are in and around the world. How do animals get infected with this particular bacteria? When we speak about domestic and wild animals, they become infected after breathing in or ingesting the spores in the contaminated soil, plants or the water. The bacteria known as Bacillus anthracis produce spores that are dormant. What do we mean by dormant? That which is not active and can live in the environment like soil for a long time, even decades. When these spores get into the body of an animal or a person, they can be activated and turn into active growing cells. When they become active, the bacteria start multiplying they start spreading out in the body produce toxins which are nothing but the poisons and they can cause severe illness as well as death to the animals as well these animals can include cattle sheep goats horses and as we see in Kerala it can also infect wild boar as well so the anthrax primarily affects the herbivorous animals in omnivorous and in the carnivorous animals it can spread through the contaminated meat or the bone meals or other feeds as well so while wild animals can get the disease by feeding on these anthrax infected carcasses. How does it infect the human beings? When it comes to the human beings, people can get sick with anthrax if they come in contact with the infected animals or the contaminated animal products. It can thus cause illness both to the human beings as well as to the animals. So in human beings, remember it is non-contagious. There have been instances where person to person transmission has occurred but such instances are rare as well. So how does it affect the human beings? One, there are spores which penetrate into the alveoli in the lungs. These spores penetrate into the intestinal tract and spores enter through the cut or the graze. Large spores lodge in nose. So the minute these spores are inhaled by the human human beings, the minute it enters into our body, these spores get activated, the bacteria then start multiplying, they spread out throughout the body, they produce toxins and also cause severe illness as well. This can happen when people breathe in the spores, eat food or drink water that is contaminated with the spores or get spores in a cut or a scrap into the skin. What are the symptoms of the anthrax? When we speak about the symptoms of the anthrax, this can be broadly categorized into how it infects the animals and how it infects the human beings. When it comes to the animals, the carcasses of an affected bull showing bloating. So bloating is one of the symptoms of this particular disease. Then bleeding of unclotted blood from a cow's nostril. So bleeding from the nostril is another symptom. Then we have the Roche bacillus anthelis bacillus of the infected animals. And when it comes to the human beings, what happens? There is inflammation of the arm as shown in the picture. Then there is typical black scars on the hand as well as on the wrist and this can also be seen on the neck as well as on the leg of the person. So when it comes to the livestock species, when they are infected by the anthrax, there is excessive fever. These animals show signs of high fever as well and if it continues to be present, it can also lead to death of these animals. In wildlife as well, sudden death is also an indicator often which is accompanied by bloody discharge from the natural orifices. And when it comes to the human beings, there can be fever and chills as well, shortness of the breath, coughing and nausea. There can also be swelling of the neck, stomach pain and diarrhea. 
these are some of the symptoms when it comes to the human beings where is the anthrax found before we discuss where the anthrax is found do remember this map is not the political map this is just showing you where the anthrax is endemic where it is epidemic so when it comes to the anthrax it is found in the agricultural regions of central and southwestern asia central and south america are also endemic as well and southern and eastern europe sub saharan africa and the caribbean are also impacted because of the anthrax in india do note when it comes to the southern part it is the southern part which is mostly affected in comparison to the northern part of india so anthrax cases have been reported in the state of andhra pradesh it is reported in the union territory of jammu and kashmir in the past in tamil nadu in odisha as well as in karnataka and in the year 2014 we did have cases of anthrax reported in the state of jharkhand and this killed as many as 10 people as well and in odisha's karapattu district there have been 300 or more people who have also been infected as well and this has snatched away life of as many as 10 people so how do we overcome it antibiotic therapy that is administered early in the course of the infection has been proven to be responsive according to the world health organization penicillin has long been the antibiotic of choice and in recent years ciprofloxacin doxycycline have also been used as alternatives one way to prevent the disease is by vaccination of the livestock so the disease cannot spread and there are also vaccines for the humans but the availability is usually restricted to at risk individuals such as lab workers people who handle the animals so what is happening in kerala right now the kerala health department the animal husbandry department the forest department have investigated the death of these wild boars and have also taken precautionary measures as well so the government has taken number of steps as well so So all those people who handled these care cases, they are kept under serious medical surveillance. A vaccination drive has been started for all the domestic animals as well, and people have also been alerted not to go near these dead bodies and not to use the meat or the milk from these anthrax-infected animals. Another aspect of anthrax is this can be used as tool of bioterrorism. What is this bioterrorism? According to U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, bioterrorism is the deliberate release of viruses bacteria toxins or other harmful agents to cause illness or death in people animals or plants so the agents are typically found in the nature they also may be altered in the laboratory as well and ultimately all the antibiotics that we have or the antivirals that we have will not be effective and then this will lead to bloodshed that is large number of people will be killed when these tools are employed if we have to take the example from the past in 2001 powdered anthrax spores were deliberately put into the letters that were mailed through the us postal system 22 people including 12 male handlers got anthrax and five of these 22 people even died as well in this particular backdrop we should also know the difference between bio warfare as well as bio terrorism there is a thin line of difference between the two so what is the difference between bio warfare and the bio terrorism when we speak about bio warfare what exactly happens it is the target that we have to look at when it comes to the bio warfare it can be the missionary of the government it can be the military of the country so when a particular country is targeting another country the target will be the military or the government personnel so if it is primarily used to hit the military personnel that that is what is called as the bio warfare but when it comes to bio terrorism it can be the general public as well so when they want mass casualties even the common people to be infected even they should be hurt by this that is what is called as bio terrorism so in bio warfare the target group is military or the government officials it is very restricted in nature but when it comes to bio terrorism large number of people will also be infected why bio terrorism why not any other tools when it comes to bio terrorism terrorists use these biological agents because they are difficult to detect people will think this is any other disease they might not know that this is released by some other country there have also been apprehensions as well and some of them have also said that covid-19 which is the disease that we have all been suffering of which is a pandemic is also a resultant of a bio terrorism that has been planted by another country so these are the allegations it is yet to be proved as well so terrorists or it can also be used by the state where these biological agents are difficult to detect 
as a result they are used by the people terrorists can also use these biological weapons as a method of creating mass panic in a country so what are the differences between bioterrorism and other forms of terrorism the speed at which the attack results in effect is delayed or prolonged in bio terrorism but when it comes to the other forms it is immediate site of the attack is unknown in the bioterrorism why because it may start in one area it may immediately start spreading in multiple areas as well covid-19 is one such example we are not saying that covid-19 is a resultant of bioterrorism which few countries also allege as well then when it comes to other forms of terrorism it is very specific knowledge of attack of boundaries or scope is unknown because it starts spreading to multiple countries as we saw in covid-19 usually well understood let's say for example if there is a launch of the nuclear missile so you know for the fact where it will hit the target but when it comes to these bioterrorism you don't know because it may start spreading beyond the particular region distribution of the affected patients geographically dispersed particularly in event of human to human transmission of the disease and in other forms of terrorism it is usually in a concentrated area first responders happen to be physicians nurses public health officials when it comes to other forms it is the police and the fire department decontamination of the victims and environment geographically dispersed it is confined to that environment isolation and the quarantine required for the transmittable disease not usually necessary for other terrorisms and medical intervention is antibiotics and vaccines it is trauma first aid and antidote when it comes to other forms of terrorism how are these bioterrorism agents classified we have three broad categorizations one is what is called as category a then what we have is category b and finally what we have is category c when it comes to these categories how are they categorized this is on the basis of the ability of the agent to be disseminated from one place to another the mortality rate of this agent the actions required for the public health preparedness as well as the capability of causing public panic so all this is taken into picture and that is how you have category a b and c so what is the definition when it comes to the category a they pose the highest risk to national security because they can be easily disseminated transmitted from person to person result in high mortality rate have potential to cause public panic and social disruption and they also require special preparedness actions as well and if we have to take the example of category a anthrax is an example of category a which is why remember this can also be important from the preliminary examination point of view that anthrax is categorized in category a when it comes to the bioterrorism when it comes to category b they pose second highest risk because they are moderately easy to disseminate and when we have category c they are easy available are easily produced and disseminated have potential for high mortality rates as well if we have to take examples of category b we have the west nile virus the hepatitis a and if we have to speak about category c we have influenza sars rabies so on and so forth so whenever there is bioterrorism or bio warfare we have the ministry of home affairs which happens to be the nodal agency for the bio warfare and it also partners with the ministry of health and family welfare and the ministry of home affairs is responsible for accessing all the threat perceptions setting up deterrent mechanisms and also providing intelligence when it comes to bioterrorism as well as biological warfare so the minute this occurs high population density areas will be immediately hit and as a result more people can get susceptible to these infections and this may also lead to mass deaths as well it is this that we have to understand with reference to this topic so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best